celebrate what God is doing for you and in you and to you. And I pray that God will speak to your heart meaningful words of life. If you would open your Bibles, Genesis chapter 50, the last chapter of the book of Genesis. Chapter 50 and beginning with verse 15, notice here the word of the Lord. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. And so they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. And then his brothers went and fell down before his face and they said, behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for I am, am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now therefore do not be afraid, I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And I want to talk today from the subject simply, never waste a hurt. Never waste a hurt. One of the deepest pains that you could ever bear in your life is when you've been hurt and betrayed by a family member, by somebody who has the same blood and DNA running through their veins. And to be rejected and despised and envied and have family members jealous of you and hating on you and plotting against you, to have that kind of familial rejection is one of the deepest hurts that you could have. You expect it from people who don't know you, but you expect your family to have your back. And uh, they had his back all right to stab him in it. And it's, it's, you don't need people who merely have your back. You want somebody who has your heart. Uh, so, but even though they, they, Joseph experienced this ultimate betrayal by his own relatives, he didn't let it make him bitter. He let it make him better. I'm glad that he had a, a, a heart in him to to understand that God could work even amid the pain of what it was like to have somebody to sell you into slavery, who plotted to kill you first, and it, had it not been for his oldest brother, Reuben, who said, let's not kill him, let's, let's make some money off him, some profit. And so they profited off of him by selling him into slavery, and you know what happened to him in Egypt with Potiphar's wife. And he went from one disappointment to another, to another, to another, and from a pit to a prison, but then God's not finished, brought him, and he wound up in a palace. You know why? Because God never ends on a negative. So if you're at a low place in your life, just hold your hope because God's not finished. All is well in the end, and if all is not well, is not the end. But God never wastes a hurt. I, I'm glad that even though sometimes negative things happen, bad things happen to good people, God never wastes a hurt. Isn't it amazing how God can take a familial tragedy, somebody can die in the family, and God uses that tragedy to bring the family back together? Can produce unity. Somebody has a terrible accident, says there's an illness of somebody in the family, and God takes something bad and makes something good work out of it. Well, he pulls us together in a wonderful, wonderful way, and we don't understand what God was doing. It was painful in the process, but God never wastes a hurt. He never wastes a hurt. And I don't care who you are and how long you've lived, everybody in the world is going to experience pain. If you live long enough, it's not a matter of if you're going to experience, it's a matter of when. You will experience pain in life. Nobody is exempt. Absolutely no one is exempt. I love what Ryan Alice said when he said that not a single person whose name is worth remembering lived a life of ease. Not a single person whose name is worth remembering lived a life of ease. If anybody is ever going to remember you, they're not going to remember you because you sat on the trees sipping lemonade or tea and never had to work in your life and your biggest complaint is that you broke a nail. You will be remembered because you went through hell and high water and you're still here today. 
Still standing, battle scars and all, but you still standing. And so, although we cannot avoid all pain in life, we can clearly endure it. There are times that you have to realize that you'll pray and God will deliver you from the fiery furnace, but there are other times that God will make you fireproof. When he makes you fireproof, it means that you've got to go through it. So he gives us a powerful key in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, in the Amplified Version, notice what it says. For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always also provide the way out, the means of escape to, to a landing place, that you may be capable and strong and powerfully, powerful, patiently, to bear up under it. You see, God will give you strength to endure certain things, and if it becomes unbearable, God always will show you a way out. There's always an alternative. You might feel like your back is up against the wall and there's only one way out. There's never just one way with God. He'll make a way out of no way. In fact, he is the way. When the Bible says that Jesus talked about, I am the way, it, it really is the, is the root of the word, I am the journey, I am the journey. He said, I'm the journey, I am the journey. You don't really come to know the Lord until you have a journey with him. Uh, it is the journey that will introduce you to yourself. When Jesus said, I am the way, he said, I am the journey, you're going to really come to know me on this journey. You don't know people until you travel with them. When you roll with somebody, you see the good side and the bad side. Every, I mean, you don't really know who you're dealing with until you got to travel with people. You got to sleep in the same room with somebody and they got snoring and all kinds, you know. You don't know people until you roll with them. I'm just telling you. And so Jesus said, I'm the journey. I, I'm going to teach you some things about life. The greatest lessons of life are not learned in a course. They are learned on a course. It's called the course of life. It's on the journey when you come to know the way. Jesus is the way, the journey. He says, come on and journey with me, roll with me. And when you roll with him, the Lord begins to teach you powerful things that will change your life forever. But I'm so glad pain is a great equalizer of life. You can't ever get to a certain status in life and then, you know, where you exempt from pain. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter. You're going to have pain whether you're rich or poor. You know, rich people hurt. I mean, they, they, they bleed too. So your money status won't, won't stop you from experiencing pain. Uh, you're going to experience pain whether you're educated or uneducated. You are going to experience pain whether you are attractive or whether you are aesthetically challenged. You are going to experience pain whether you're black or white, whether you're Latino, whether you're Asian. You're going to experience pain whether you're employed or unemployed. You will experience pain whether you're married or single. There are some people that just think that they're just, you know, they're not going to, you know, get married because married people have too many issues. Single people have issues too. I mean, they have issues on both sides of it, you know. I'm like Abraham Lincoln. He said, you're as happy as you make up your mind to be. Whether you're married or single, you have to be able to be just like Paul. Paul said, in whatever state I find myself, single or married, <laughs> you know, he said, you know, I, I have, I've learned therewith to be content. You have to learn contentment. But there are some times that you cannot avoid pain. And the good thing about it, God loves brokenness and contrition of heart because brokenness on earth creates openness in heaven. If you ever let yourself be broken. Brokenness on the earth creates an openness in the heaven. When your heart is broken before God, you get heaven's attention. And uh, there are different kinds of pain. Not all pain is the same. There's emotional pain. There is mental anguish. There is physical agony. 
financial discomfort, there is relational discontent, there is spiritual torment. I know some people that have demons that come to them when it's time to go to sleep at night. And, and they're, they're tormented by spirits. So I'm not just talking about back pain and neck pain and stomach pain. You know, there are different kinds of pain. But pain is a natural part of life. It's a natural part of life. Don't run from it. You have to see its purpose in your life, and then you have to embrace it and grow. But learn to see its purpose in your life. There, there's a purpose. God has a, a purpose for it because you never waste a hurt. Never waste a hurt. God never wastes a hurt. Whenever you grow, you experience what we call growing pains, growing pains. No pain, no, no pain, no gain. Whenever you produce something or reproduce something, you're going to experience pain. It is true with your family. When you increase in your family, childbirth, we bring forth children in pain. It, it, it's not only just the pain of getting them here, it's the pain of keeping them here. Because, you know, they'll do things that will make you say, I brought you into this world, I will take you. Every now and then you have to threaten them with that. Some people probably need to follow through on the threat. <laughs> Let me edit that. Some idiot will be watching and say, you know, go out and murder that child and say that the bishop, that the Lord gave them a confirming word. <laughs> But whenever you produce something, there's a pain with producing. There's a pain with producing. There's a pain with reproducing. Whenever you grow, if you, if you grow anything, what do you have to get to? Go to a bigger building? Bigger building means bigger issues, means bigger expenses, means bigger liability. Uh, bigger is not always better. It, it, it means more of other stuff. The bigger the dog, the more fleas he has on his back. So you have to understand, whenever you grow, it costs to grow because when you grow, you have to finance growth. And people can be looking at you big balling, but you have to finance growth. Growth must always be financed. And those are called growing pains. If you grow in, in the ideologies of your mind, if you grow, when you produce music, when you produce musical productions, when you produce anything, I guarantee you there is a pain because when you work with creative people, is that true, Lolita? You don't know anything about that. <laughs> but when, whenever you produce or you reproduce, you are going to deal with some pain. And, and let me just tell you this. Your life will never grow beyond the level of pain that you are willing to tolerate. So you have to learn to increase your tolerance for pain. There are some people that want what you have, but they are not willing to endure the pain that it took you to get what you've got or even to stay where you are. They want the glory, but they don't want the pain that goes along with you. They, they talk about how cute your children are, but they don't want the stretch marks. <laughs> so when you're going to experience pain whenever, whenever you produce something or whenever you reproduce something, whether it's your family, whether it is a church, whether it's an organization, whether it is a business, whether it is a government, you're going to experience pain. So my... my Suggestion to you, my admonition is to stop running from pain. Stop running from it. Uh, when Jesus was up on the cross and he was suffering excruciating pain because they took nine inch nails and drove them through his wrists and drove them through his feet and pierced them in his side with a spear and took these, uh, these terrible huge thorns and crushed them down on his scalp and he was bleeding profusely and he was in excruciating pain and then they came by and gave him this mix of gall, which was sweet wine that was mixed with a poisonous liver bile, which was to serve as a painkiller. And they offered it to Jesus, and Jesus turned his head. He's in excruciating pain, and he said, I must feel what my people are going through. And here's the reason, because if you don't feel my pain, you cannot write the prescription for my cure. And, and I don't want to deal with somebody who doesn't even identify with what I'm going through. Jesus said, don't anesthetize the pain. I'm not going to take anything in my system that will make it where I cannot feel the penalty of the sin that I am dying for. He didn't die for his own sin. He died for the sins of his own, of the world. 
that he who knew no sin became sin for us, and sin always has with it a penalty of pain. So, but Jesus was unwilling to dull the pain with any kind of narcotic or poison. He faithfully endured that pain. He faithfully endured it. But your life will never grow beyond the level of pain that you are willing to tolerate. You want to grow to another level, you've got to increase your tolerance for pain. You've got to increase the pain of people talking about you, making judgmental statements about you when they don't even know you, assuming things about you, making statements. You have to be able to rise above the pain of criticism, the, the pain of, of, of not being able to rest well at night, the pain of not being able to go places and do things that everybody else have, the pain of not having free time and, and, and just yourself to yourself. You, there's a pain that's associated with that. Did you know that the word indolent actually means habitually lazy? Touch your neighbor, say, I know that person. <laughs> indolent, habitually lazy, habitually lazy. It, it, it actually comes from the Latin word I-N, which means not, not, and then dolens, D-O-L-E-N-S, dolens, which means to feel pain. So indolence in etymology means not feeling pain. In other words, an indolent person is a person, lazy people are avoiding pain. That's their whole goal. They are avoiding pain. But here's the deal. This is why I say pain is a natural part of life. It's a natural process of life. Whenever you're going to produce or reproduce, you're going to experience pain. When you try to avoid pain, you're going to create pain for somebody else. And so anybody who's avoiding pain, the pain of working, they create a pain on, on other folks who do work. You see, whenever you find indolent folks too lazy, they're too lazy to take the trash out, too lazy to clean up the dishes, too lazy to pick up their clothes. Whenever they are avoiding the pain of it, they create pain for somebody else who's going to be responsible. And so every indolent person is indolent. Lazy folks are trying to avoid pain. Have you ever had some stuff to do, and when you thought about doing it, it just gives you a headache, and you just say, oh, God, oh. Some of your kitchens are in such a condition that it saps your energy to even think about it. And so it just, it, you, just, you just avoid it. It's like, I don't want to look in there. My, my, I, I get weak when you, when you start thinking about it. If stuff ever piles up, it, it can get so high that it saps your energy. Just keep looking straight ahead. You don't, you don't have to... Don't, don't look with this thing where I identify with you. Tell on yourself. People, you put your business in the street. Just... But that's what indolent is, is about. Lazy folks are avoiding pain, but when, when you really try to avoid pain, you end up creating more pain someplace else. And so instead of really finding the real root cause of the pain and dealing with the cause of the pain, what we start majoring in is treating the symptoms. That is a major flaw in our medical world is that they are trained in med school to diagnose and prescribe, to diagnose and do surgery, to just diagnose and treat a symptom instead of getting to the root cause. So you go to a doctor because you have gastrointestinal issues and they diagnose you with some type of peptic ulcer and this kind of thing and you got all this acid coming up and they'll give you some type of super prescription strength antacid when they need to correct your diet. Go to the root cause. The root cause is that you're eating something that your system does not agree with and you want something that allows you to keep eating the stuff that is killing you just as long as we can take away the symptom. It's not the symptom is not your problem, it's the root cause. The root cause. So you have to go to the root cause. Uh, there are always causes of pain, various causes of pain. Uh, pain is sometimes uh, created because of discomfort. It is sometimes nothing more than discomfort that is created through disorder. When you have a whole lot of disorder in your life, you have the discomfort of pain because of things are out of order. 
if your finances are out of order, you're going you're gonna to be in pain. Pain is discomfort created through disorder. That's one root cause. If you can deal with the root, go to the root of it. Listen, this is not the kind of message that's going to make you get up and run and shout on the floor. But if, you, if you'll take hold of it, it'll help you to be better. Sometimes the root of pain is that you're simply growing because you've got a new venture, and that causes pain. Anytime that you get anything new, if you get a new husband, you're going to deal with pain. A new wife, you're going to deal with some pain because you've got to get adjusted to each other. So anything new creates a different level of pain. That's why we like the familiar. Now, sometimes the presence of pain uh, simply means that something is wrong in the harmony of the systems of the body or the mind. Pain sometimes is a sign that something is being healed. Did you know that to not feel pain is a major dysfunction in your life? Can you imagine that? Somebody else said that pain is nothing more than weakness leaving the body. It's amazing that at other times it means that something is being birthed in you or through you. May I tell you, God never wastes a hurt. Every time that there is a wound in you, a W-O-U-N-D, God transforms it into a womb, a W-O-M-B. And every time you've been hurt somewhere, look for something to be birthed in you. Don't you dare come out of your pain empty-handed. Don't ever go through the pain of a divorce and come out and you're the same person. You ought to grow. Something ought to be birthed in you. God ought to bring ministry out of you to be able to help somebody else to go further. You didn't go through what you went through to be the same thing and not to help anybody else. Whenever you've been wounded, God will use what was a wound and make it a womb. And something is being birthed in you every place that you have been hurt. Because God never wastes a hurt. He wants to transform something in your life. And so whatever happened to you has only happened to you so that the same God that had to comfort you can now be a comfort to other people who are suffering any other type of affliction. Whenever you go through the pain, it, it go through discipline of correction. Uh, it's a pain. It's a pain. Whenever you leave an old relationship and, and come into a new relationship, it's, it's a pain. And I don't know who this is for, but... Sometimes it actually hurts to cut off a relationship that's unhealthy for you. But it will pain you even when the decision is right. And because you experience the pain, you might assume that I'm doing the wrong thing. Oh, you better hear the Holy Ghost today. You really, I challenge you to hear the Holy Ghost. Because God had to speak to the prophet Samuel when, when he had uh, spoken to uh, him and to go to anoint Saul as the king. And Saul was all right for a while, but then he got off track. And he got out of the will of God and usurped his authority and God says I have rejected him and now Samuel feels responsible for this thing and God begins to speak to Samuel in 1st Samuel chapter 16 in verse 1 and he goes to him and he says Saul uh, Samuel Samuel how long are you gonna mourn over Saul seeing that I have rejected him from be, from reigning over Israel how long he says you fill your horn with oil and then go it's time for you to bust a move thank you for watching power for living with Bishop Dale C Bryant Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.